Hello everyone and welcome to another exciting episode of How Not To Write A Novel. Today I've been moderately productive but only a small amount of that has been on something useful. This morning I spent rather more time than usual um, playing games on my Twitch channel, which you might also have seen. This afternoon I spent quite a lot of time going for a walk, which um, is probably good for my mental health and general fitness, but doesn't get a story written. So it's only this evening that I've got back onto writing for, well, I did actually manage to write some words towards a different project I'm posting on Wattpad. Not a whole chapter, but at least I'm making progress on it. And this evening I've managed to write a little more on the plan for Silent Scream. I've come up with a more detailed background for um, some of the characters. I've got this guy, Daryl who is someone Julian came into contact with when he was um, first thinking about hunting a werewolf. Daryl is a rich guy who knows that monsters exist and he's willing to sponsor a group and help provide them with weapons and stuff so that they can help to keep people safe. Daryl is also connected to a few other people around the world, or, well, in other cities at least, who might be doing similar things. Um, Daryl is indirectly in contact with other gifted groups, and also with some of the um, businessmen and other rich people who are profiting off the existence of unnaturals. So he might have an indirect link to people like Walker, Marnivello or Constantine. I'm not sure of the exact relationships between all these people yet. Although Marnivello has shown up in the first book I wrote in this world, Hunter's Gift. Um, which will hopefully be out soon, especially if I can find somebody to help me do a um, better cover or editing for it. One of the other people Julian went to when he first started doing this is a guy called Aaron Peel, who is a priest or a former priest, I'm not entirely sure, um, who basically he reasoned that In medieval era, when people believed in monsters, there would probably be somebody fighting them. And out of all the people who might have been involved with this, the church is most likely to have kept some kind of records. So even if they no longer believe it, they might still have some documents relating to werewolves from the Middle Ages. Julian wasn't expecting to get a positive response here, but um Aaron was able to help him and eventually ended up joining the team when it turned out that he had a gift of his own. So we've got one combat guy, Julian, and two kind of advisors, Aaron and Dylan. Dylan also added Alex to the group on recognising that she had a gift and Julian wasn't entirely comfortable with this because she wants to fight, but she isn't a cop, she isn't a soldier, she doesn't have formal training, and Julian thinks she needs to. So that's basically our group of um, monster hunters. I'm going to write up some more details about them, but I think that's got me giving me something to work off for when I come to actually write about them. Then I go on to actually writing the next scene, which, um, well, might not necessarily be the next scene because it might be grafted onto the first scene. But this is um, a continuation of Alex meeting the first drinker we actually see in, well, 
In this case, she's just accused him of being a drinker. Alex waited, staring at the man in front of her. He didn't try to deny it and he didn't attack. He didn't run either, but she'd never really been expecting that. He was a drinker. There could be no confusion on that point now. The silence spoke volumes. Does a drinker have to be evil? He asked after what seemed like an eternity. Do you really know as much as you think? They, Alex started and then paused. He was redirecting the conversation and that effortless confidence would have made it so easy to go along with it. But she wasn't going to let herself be mesmerised so easily by an unnatural creature. And when she wondered if she'd come close to losing her determination, that made the anger inside her burn even hotter. It was almost powerful enough to burn right through her fear now. You kill people. You attack them and feed on their souls. Can you still be a good guy? I didn't feed on those three. He jerked a thumb towards one of the muggers. Uh, I've got a bit of a grand mistake there, but... Lying on the ground. I hurt them, but I saw a young woman who could have been in some kind of distress. Plenty of humans would have done the same, and many of them would have some kind of ulterior motive. We're not vampires, you know. We live forever, but we don't need to drink blood to do so. All we consume is what you call a person's shadow. You might call it a soul, but I think that's being melodramatic. Most people don't even know it's there. They don't know it's gone. No. You feed on the soul, we know that much. Emotions, isn't it? Drinking blood was always about creating fear. And I think you did that well enough by the way you taunted that one. And that's as far as I've got um, at this point. It's a bit more wordy than I'd hoped, actually. But basically, this guy is trying to say that he actually is a nice guy. He doesn't kill people. He doesn't necessarily even hurt people unless they're bad people. He's beaten up three muggers, but he's not killed them. And he's not drunk their blood or anything. Alex is going to have something to say about this. Um, because the way I've written it, in this universe, the shadow drinker does just consume a per what they call a person's shadow, which you could interpret as being the soul. It could be some kind of um, metaphysical thing that makes a person who they are. Consuming someone's soul doesn't physically hurt them immediately, but it makes them compliant, submissive, likely to do what they're told. Um, if you do more, then they start to get ill, weak, symptoms with no explanation that medicine can find, and people do die eventually. We've had a brief mention in there of creating emotions. I need to build that up a bit more because that's the important fact that was supposed to come out of this conversation. In order to feed on someone, a drinker needs some kind of emotional connection. The victim needs to have some emotion towards the drinker. Drinking blood creates fear, which they can then use to actually consume the person's soul. But it could easily be other emotions. So now that makes a bit more sense out of what Alex said in the last scene, where she said, was he looking for gratitude or adoration or something? Was he planning to feed on her using whatever emotions were generated by protecting her? Maybe he had that in mind, maybe he didn't. I can see there's a couple of ways this scene could go at this point. Was he just going to feed on the fear of the muggers? Is he doing this because he wants to use his superior strength and speed to protect people? Or is he feeding off the people he's saved as well? And if he is, does he know how much it's going to hurt them? 
it's entirely possible that he doesn't. But anyway, I've been talking for quite a while about a relatively short piece of writing. Um, if you want to see the full chapter, I'll put a link in the description. Please leave a comment. You can leave comments on the document or in the comments down there. I really would like to see some feedback on these videos. If you like the video, then I believe there's a thumbs up button which will let the algorithm know that you like it. Uh, if you know anybody else who might like my work, please share it. If you subscribe and turn on notifications, you'll get uh, little pings to tell you when I upload each day's video. And um, if you haven't read it yet, you can look for yesterday's video. There should be a link up here. Or tomorrow's video. There should be a link up here once I've actually done it. But until then, uh, bye. And I hope you're enjoying my work.